Hey everyone, welcome back to part 5 of the full assembly process. We're moving deeper into the build, and the jet is starting to look more and more complete. First, the plug for the sunroof controller is connected to the microphone wiring harness. The harness is clipped into the slot on the interior light assembly. Then, the light is mounted to the roof liner and snapped into place. Next, the rear seat wiring harness is routed through an opening, making the next steps easier. The rear seat belt harness is plugged in. After that, the rear hatch handle and its bracket are installed. The harness is secured on the bracket, pulled through the opening, and plugged into the handle. This handle also carries the backup camera, so the camera harness is connected here as well. The wiring is clipped to the bracket inside the hatch to prevent any rattles against the panel. The rear seat belt buckle is placed over a stud, ready for tightening later. A barcode is scanned into the system. An electronic torque gun tightens the engine mount bolts. This mount is what later holds the engine to the body. It also absorbs vibration during operation. Now, notice the thin sheet metal under it. That is designed for engine drop protection. In a frontal crash, the engine tilts down a few inches and locks against the subframe. That way it does not push into the cabin, reducing the risk of injury to passengers. Next, rubber pads are placed in the mounting holes on both sides of the rear body. The main tail lamps are unwrapped, plugged in, and installed. The opposite side is done the same way. Then the smaller tail lamps on the hatch are mounted and connected. The B-pillar trim comes next. A code is scanned from the trim. The lower panel is clipped into place. Then the weather stripping is pressed in with a special tool. The seat belt is routed through the upper panel, which is also clipped in. A screw is tightened with a powered torque wrench. A cover marked airbag is added and the seat belt pretensioner is bolted in. After that, an insulation pad is installed under the driver's dashboard with a torque tool. The headlight switch wiring is routed through the lower panel and clipped in. The pad is secured to the bottom of the dash. Three screws lock the lower panel, plus two more on the side. The small interior lamp is inspected, plugged in, and installed. The headlight switch is plugged in, clipped into place, and secured. Back at the rear, the smaller hatch lamps are locked with screws. The main tail lamps are also tightened with two screws each. Later, they will be adjusted for final alignment. Now we move to the triangular windows. Robots pick them up and run them under an automatic glue applicator. A precise bead is laid down around the edges, making sure thickness is even and no gaps appear. The glass is then aligned to locating pins on the body and pressed into place. This small glass is actually the most expensive, not because of production cost, but because there are fewer suppliers. Next, the windshield. A robot runs a bead of adhesive all around the edge. Another machine picks it up, rotates it, and moves it into position. A capsule is placed on the A-pillars, then the glass is lowered, pressed firmly and clipped at the bottom to lock it in place. The rear windshield is installed the same way. The rear seat belt buckle is bolted down. Expansion nuts are installed on the rear quarter panels to prepare for the bumper bracket. More expansion nuts go under the tail lamps. The hood is propped open with a support. The seat belt pretensioner is tightened with an electronic torque gun. Then the seat belt bolts and buckles are secured. 
Another bolt on the pretensioner is tightened, and the harness is plugged in. The front bumper bracket is installed next. Expansion nuts are fitted into the fender and inner wheel housing. The bracket is mounted on studs and tightened with a torque wrench. A special tool removes the vehicle identification plate. Rubber plugs are pressed into the side panels to block water entry. An exhaust heat shield is mounted at the rear and fixed with semi-round nuts. The fuel line is clipped into its bracket, then the bracket is secured to the underbody. The entire chassis assembly is moved under the body on a large pallet. Equipment lifts it up and bolts it to the body. Then the rear axle fasteners are installed. The tightening gun automatically moves from one side to the other, securing both sides. Next, two engine mounting bolts are pre-tightened with a torque tool, and later equipment will fully tighten them. Expansion nuts are added to the rear wheel housings. The main suspension bolts are fitted and snugged down, including axle seat bolts and rear link bolts. The front suspension bolts are installed after aligning the threads with a jig. Transmission bolts are snugged down with a powered gun. and the engine mount bolts are pre-tightened on the right side. Machines then step in to torque all these bolts automatically, using a crisscross pattern for accuracy. At the same time, another device mounts the center tunnel heat shield, while yet another one secures the subframe bolts and brackets.